There once was a Chicago Bears fan who hated the draft his team ran. He wanted receivers, deep pass retrievers, but got stuck with Nate Peter Mann, your boy. Yeah. I got a text chain right now. I just looked at it. You know all the people on my text chain, Chicago people, Don, Vince, among others. And that's all we're talking about. The Bears haven't made one move in the offseason, including the draft, that makes any sense to us. No, no, they make no sense. They didn't get anything for this young quarterback. You draft a quarterback, you it trade up, so happy and you don't. When you're angry I, at the God, Bears. I'm angry. I am so angry. Happy. They even have a new coach. You're angry at the Bears. It's new so coach, Welcome new to BTI, GM. Boys and girls. In today's episode, the Grizzlies crush the Warriors. The Rangers stay alive, and the Sixers and Mavs fight for Game Sevens. But we begin today with what happened to the Boston Celtics last night. They were outscored 11 to two in the last minute and 45 seconds and they were beaten at home by Milwaukee. Bobby Portis made a great basket on an offensive rebound after a missed free throw by Antetokounmpo. Drew Holiday made a great block on Marcus Smart on what could have been the winning Boston basket. Wilbon, does it feel like Boston can come back from this? Tony, I, th I think it does, and probably because the people I've been talking to, whether on a text chain or on the phone, and some of them include Hall of Fame basketball players, they all seem to think and suggest that, yeah, the Celtics can come back. Doesn't mean they will win the game. Nobody's going to Vegas that I know of out of my group. But it seems like they can. But I'll tell you my immediate reaction last night was that I spent a lot of time over the last 40 years sitting in Boston Garden covering big playoff games, going all the way back to, to Bird versus whomever, Julius and Magic and whomever, the Pistons and the Bulls. And I don't ever, Tony associate last night's brand of loss with the Celtics. In the franchise history, going to the old Boston Garden and TD Bank Garden, any place with garden in it, the Celtics were the ones winning that kind of game at the end, and the other team would fall yeah. apart and Bird steals the ball. I covered a million of those. You too. I know you did before me and we did it together. So I just, I was stunned last night that the Celtics, I know Milwaukee took it and played like champions every inch of the way, particularly Antetokounmpo, who looked like a fighter in the 14th round. But man, the Celtics choked a little bit on that one tone to me. So let me go to your point about how the Celtics don't lose these games. In the entire playoff career of the Boston Celtics at home, they were 141 and one, went up nine points in the fourth quarter. And the, and the one that they lost was in the bubble. So it wasn't that in Boston. Count. This no, is the first one ever in Boston. And they yeah. were up nine with 145 to go. Look, the game was over. Um, I, don't, I don't often watch all of these games. I got home last night. I turned on the Celtics. I watched to the end. You know I watched to the end because I sent you a text about the Fortis play and the Drew Holiday play. Yes. And you yes. sent me, which I woke up this morning to a text that said, quote, got to be one of the worst home cart playoff losses in Celtics history. The Holiday play was spectacular because Smart was. was on his way to the basket, blocked from the side like that, and a great play by Holiday, court awareness, he's falling out of bounds, he throws the ball off Marcus Smart. But the poor display should never have happened. You've got to get that defensive rebound. You've simply got to get that the rebound. Because if you get the rebound, you're going to be fouled. You're going to win the game on the line. It's not. And what we're going to be talking about today is Antetokounmpo missing a foul shot. Do yes. I think they can come back? I do think they can come back. But, Mike, I think they should have won the last four games in this series already. It should have been a 4-1 series. Look, we've yes. seen the Celtics when they were younger. And you can make the excuse for them then. They lost to LeBron. This LeBron, right? They had a game seven in Boston. Hey, okay, okay, that's that. That's earlier. They're a mature team now. They got everything in place. They're the team that had the great defense late in the season. They're the team that took the Nets out, the betting favorite in Vegas, your, your boys, your people. And now, yeah, man, boy. well, you love Vegas. You love quoting Vegas and the line and all of that. Fuck them. Go ahead. The, the Warriors look to be big faves heading into last night's Game 5, speaking of Vegas, against the Grizzles, but that's not how it played out at all. The Grizzlies playing without star guard John Moran, of course, 
beat down Golden State, led by as many as 55 before winning by 39. Tony, what in the world happened there? Well, I thought the Warriors were going to win that game and close out the series, and it was a total no-show. It was like the lifeless 76ers the night before in Miami. Yeah, it was. I, I mean, yeah. So maybe, maybe they felt, well, John Morant is out. We're good. We're going to win this game. I, I, you know, maybe they were overconfident. It probably didn't help that Steve Kerr was out. And if I'm Mike Brown, I do not want this on my resume as I go to Sacramento that I was down well, by 55 in late. a playoff game. The thing that they, that they overlooked, though, and we've been talking about this for over a month, is that Memphis without John Morant is just as good as Memphis with John Morant. They're now 21 and 6 with John Morant, which is an unbelievable record. Um, it was, it, it was, the game was watchable only in the sense of a car crash because you wanted to see what ultimately happened. And having said all this, Mike, would I be surprised if they go to Golden State and win game six handily? Not at all. Wow. I, Tony, I don't Okay, so let me first, let me, let me start with a bit of credit for our dear friend Charles Wade Barkley, who said when Golden State was just butchering Memphis in game three, Charles said at the end of that game, he said, you know what? I know this was a non-game and Golden State was terrific, but size, Memphis has now introduced more size. Stephen Adams, who couldn't play against Minnesota and Carl Anthony Towns, that matchup is the worst matchup he's got in the league. But against Golden State, where Draymond Green is effectively a big man, even at whatever Draymond is, 6'6", Tony, size gives them problems. Size gave Golden State problems last night. And Memphis has got to go back to Golden State and say, we're going to put some size out there. We're going to put Jaron Jackson Jr. and Steven Adams out there, and let's see you come at that. Right. I mean, we know that right. you're the great warrior team. So there's one bit of strategery that I was paying attention to. The other is, you know that Golden State, as much as we love watching them, you and I both love watching them over the years, they get the sweet Georgia Brown music playing in their head, and they're not paying attention. They're just going to do what they do and go up and down the court like Curly Neal, except not everybody's the Washington Generals on the other side. Do I expect okay. the Warriors to win this series? Yes, of course I do. But, yeah. but, but now, don't you have pause a little bit? Let me, let me be brief about this. In this series, Steph Curry is shooting 32% from three, which stinks. Klay Thompson yeah. is shooting 33% from three, which stinks. In this series so far, Draymond Green has only 24 points in five games, and he's got 20 turnovers, which stinks. And they're still up three to two. So am I going to be surprised when they go up four to two? No, I am not going to be surprised. I'm just telling you okay. that. Let's go to hockey. Okay. The Florida Panthers appeared to be in an impossible position last night down 3-0 at home to Washington. But the Panthers scored the next five goals and won. The New York Rangers were down 2-0 at home to the Pittsburgh Penguins. But they wound up winning 5-3, and Sidney Crosby left the ice injured. So, Wilbon, whose win feels bigger, the Panthers or the Rangers? Let me start to answer this by saying, like, I would have called you much more frequently if I had known you were going to be up at the wrong Washington game. <laughs> I mean, I, I start getting text messages. There's stuff on Twitter. There's stuff on Instagram. And it says, look, your boy is at the Nats. And I'm like, he wandered yeah. into a Nats Nets game. Nets. He went to the wrong yeah. arena. Now, not that you would have gone to Florida, of course, where the, where the Cappies were. No, I wouldn't go to Tone. Florida. The bigger win was the Rangers because they were facing elimination. Just that reason alone. Now, the Capitals, which I watched a chunk of, that was shocking because they're up 3 nothing, And I keep looking down. I look back up, and I see, you know, Panther red shirts with hands in the air because they have scored one, two, three, four, five, five unanswered. Yeah. But they weren't yeah. facing elimination, Tone. The Rangers with their whole goaltending situation, and then bigger than that is you're facing elimination. So the answer is the Rangers. Right. So I'm tempted to say the Rangers as well um, because Shesterkin – finally won a game. I mean, that's a good sign. It's not a good sign that he gave up two goals early and three in the game, but he finally won a game. And the fact that, that Crosby may be out from now on that, for a while, we, we don't know that. that. That's a big know, plus yeah. for the Rangers. But I'm going to say Florida, and I'm going to say Florida because, Mike, it's impossible to get back in the playoffs in a 3 nothing game. The Capitals have blown two three-goal leads this whole year. Sadly for them, both of them 
have been to Florida. And the Capitals, you, it's, it's three nothing. It's the playoffs. You can't lose that game when you just no. lost the previous game when you were up 2-1 and the other team pulled its goalie and tied it and then beat you in overtime. As I said about the Celtics, they should have won the series already. The Capitals yeah. should have won this should've series won this already. Series too. So are they going to win now? To me, are they going to win? It's Florida. To, uh, it's hard. To, it's hard to believe they're going to win. I believe they'll win six, but it's hard to believe they'll win two in a row. You don't know. Let's take a break. Coming up, the Sixers and the Mavs both return home tonight. Which team is more likely to force a game seven? And will the Ning and Oilers yeah, also the push their series respectively to game sevens? Toss up. Is next. What will you toss up? More likely to force a game seven tonight, the Sixers or the Mavs? Okay, so the Sixers are at home, the Mavericks are at home. In both these series, no home team has lost yet. So both teams are probably likely to go for a game seven. I was very surprised at how terrible and what a no show Philadelphia was when they were in Miami. Um, I think I mentioned this the other day. Other than Embiid shooting 7 of 12, the rest of the team was 24 of 73, which is just so terrible in a playoff. So armed with that, I think they bounce back. I think Embiid has a really good game, and I think enough of the other Sixers are good enough that they actually even win handily, because I think the closer score will be the Dallas game. So I'm, I'm going to pick Philadelphia with this one caveat that I believe the most overlooked an underappreciated coach in the NBA is Eric Spolstra. I, I, Tony, I agree with you about that. I'm going to go with the Sixers, too. Look, the Sixers suffered a humiliating loss. That was humiliation. It was. And they got too much pride, I think, to just sort of go out meekly. I mean, the Philadelphia 76ers, we're not talking about some franchise born in the 80s like Orlando or the... We're talking about, don't the Philadelphia 76ers go back? Weren't they the Syracuse Nationals? We're talking about, like, an original NBA team, and they got skunked. And they can't have that happen. I think the Sixers are going to win this game tonight and force a game seven. I still would pick Miami to win the series. The Mavericks, Tony, I'm I torn th here. I thought they were the Philadelphia Warriors at first. Weren't they? The Phil was, that was an original team, the Philadelphia Warriors, right? That was no, the Warriors, are the, the Warriors are the Warriors. They're the Golden they State came Warriors. Out of Syracuse? I think the Sixers wow, were the Syracuse right. Nationals, I think. I think. So, okay, you're but right. Tone, the it's Mavs, in my ear. You're right. The Mavs were beaten, Tone, but they weren't humiliated. And they're the Mavericks. I mean, That's you know, right. and by the way, That's this right. whole Booker Doncic thing, they could be going back against each other back and forth for the next 12 years or more. That's kind of cool. Dallas may likely win, but I still, I, I, I'm giving the, 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 the sons of puncher's chance yeah. to end that series tonight. I think the Sixers are, yeah, I think it's the Sixers, me personally. Yeah. Oh, what's next? A absolutely. Toss-up, more likely to force a game seven tonight, the Lightning or the Oilers? I don't know that much about hockey. I will concede, Wilbon, that you're the only person I have ever heard call that team the Ning. But I do know this one thing, that in the last three playoff years, whenever Tampa Bay has lost a playoff game, they have come yeah. back the next game, they have won. 16-0. 16 times in a row. It's amazing. They lost the last game, and now they're back, and I, will, I believe they will win at home in front of the Ning fans. Edmonton... I, I don't know. They've lost their best defenseman to a suspension uh, for a headbutt. What are you doing? Taking yourself out of a playoff game. So I'm going to roll with Tampa Bay in this one. Yeah, I, you know, listen, I'm getting calls from the Tampa Bay radio stations. They want me to come on because I said I'm not rooting for some SEC hockey team. And that's the <laughs> truth. I'm not rooting for them. I'm sorry. I'm rooting for Toronto. And I'm rooting for Edmonton, too, so I'm, I'm, I'm fully invested in being an honorary Canadian right now, Tony. So, I, 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 but the Ning, they're going for three in a row. I mean, all these teams yeah. that won a couple or even three over the last, you know, whatever, 15 years or so, Pittsburgh, Chicago, uh, the Kings won at least two, the Bruins, they, they've not been able, nobody's won a third one. I mean, you've got to go back a long time to get a third one, Tony, so a third in a I row. I thought Chicago had three. No, we Wait, had three in five years. Not in a row. Oh, oh. Not in a row. Okay. The Lightning right. is trying to get three in a row. That's a hell of a thing. 
I'm not rooting for them, but but they're going to win. They're going to win. They're going to win this game tonight. I'm glad in Tampa that you the Chamber of Commerce is going after you. That's good. That's yeah. it. Let's take one last break. Still to come. Will the killer? I tell you what. I don't think any of them have surpassed the Alou family. I mean, you talk about distinguished players, one and all, yep. including Moises. Impressive. Yep. Yep. Happy anniversary, Giancarlo Stanton. On this day seven years ago, when Stanton was still playing for the Marlins, he had a blast over the left field stands completely out of Dodger Stadium. At the time, that was the fifth fair ball to totally leave the yard. The other hitters who had done that, Mark McGuire, Mike Piazza, and Willie Stargell twice. Since then, Fernando Tatis Jr. has also joined that club. Stanton's shot was measured at 478 feet. The longest ball belongs to Stargell, 506 feet in 1969. Stanton, of course, is now with the Yankees, and this year the Yankees are hitting bombs. Aaron Judge, who hit a walk-off homer to beat Toronto the other night, leads the majors with 10 homers. Anthony Rizzo, your boy, has nine, yeah. and Stanton has seven. There's a reason why the Yankees are called the Bronx Bombers. Yeah, because I got a 240-foot fence to hit it over with. My son can take a sand wedge and hit it over that. And by the way, Mike Stanton lost me when he changed his name from Mike Stanton to go to Giancarlo. <laughs> and the best of those power hitters, the most powerful man, was Willie Stargell. Twice! Yep. Willie Stargell's flying west saying, let yep. me at that Dodger Stadium. Let me at that now. Come on. Yankee Stadium. Happy trails to Francisco Mejia hitting Jimmy Hergett's curveball. Watch this. In Anaheim last night, Tampa Bay's Mejia got fooled so badly by the Angels' Hergett that Mejia not only didn't come close to getting the ball on his back, so but after funny. he swung and missed, he got the ball on his hip. The pitch hit him. Uh, Mejia, who uh, was batting 344 at the time, swung and missed at a pitch that was so terrible, it hit him on his left hip. And that's a strikeout, kids. Not to take your base. You swung, pal. He also swung like four seconds early. That's like a little league situation. When you got a great curveball as a right-hander, I would throw that to lefties when I was 12. Is why I can't even get my arm up in this position now as a grown man. But I love throwing in on lefties like that and having them swing like twice because they can't calculate how slow that curveball is coming. You can see it on his face that he goes, uh-oh, I'm really missing this I'm thing. Really we go to the big finish. Up. Zach Kleiman of Memphis won the NBA's Executive of the Year. Is that deserved? You got a team that's good enough to go 21-6 and six without Ja, and you got Ja? Yeah, I'd say that's deserved. Kentucky Derby winner Rich Strike will not run in the Preakness. You must be sad. I am, because it takes out, you know, the possibility of a triple crown. I read a story today that he's been running on six to seven week intervals. This is two weeks, and they're holding him out and putting him in the Belmont. But yeah, I'm sad. World number one, Igor Sviantek, your girl, has now won 25 yeah. straight matches. I'll bet you're impressed. Tony, I am. And there's lots of new young stars rising on the men's and women's circuit. I can't wait to watch this season, which really starts about now, for real. The Patriots traded Jared Stidham to the Raiders for a sixth round pick. Is that a big deal? It obviously means they've given up on any possibility that he'll be the quarterback of the Patriots. Last one. Two other NHL game sixes tonight. Hurricanes at Bruins, Wild at Blues. Who you got? The Bruins have been getting overmatched, but they're back at home, so I'm going to go with them, and I'm going to go with the Blues up 3-2, Tony, to finish that series out. We're out of time. We will try and do better the next time, and I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, knuckleheads. Check out the NBA Countdown Show.